Hi, everyone. It is great to be here at CDCon. Welcome to DevOps Works. Why hasn't security kept up? I'm Joni Clipper, the CEO and co-founder of Stackhawk. I've been building software for software developers since I graduated from my MBA program in 2010. And in 2019, I founded Stackhawk to bring application security into the DevOps workflow by helping software engineers find and fix security bugs in their code before they deploy to production. My co-founders and I saw an incredible opportunity to reimagine application security through a software engineering lens. In this talk, I'll share what key DevOps tenants have been missing in the realm of application security that have really kept security from shifting left into the developer workflow and what we need to do to modernize the practice so that we can rapidly deliver more secure software. So DevOps is pervasive and it works. What I mean by that is DevOps has unlocked the ability for companies to deliver value to their customers faster. We've seen major shifts in tooling and processes that enable you, our software engineers, to go fast and deliver faster to our customers. Agile unlocked the ability to quickly plan, develop, and deliver software to meet the needs of our customers. Virtualization, cloud, and infrastructure as code removed that sysadmin bottleneck as we empowered engineers to deploy and manage their own resources. And then massive efficiencies happened with automation throughout our integration and deployment pipeline. We further unlocked speed with orienting to really small releases by breaking up the monolith and investing in microservices architecture and containerization. And then we improved uptime by creating the ability for software engineers who wrote the code to be able to manage that code in production. The next most important area of investment is about empowering our engineering teams when it comes to AppSec. When we do this, we unlock the ability not only to deliver software quickly, but to secure software quickly. And our customers expect this of us. So whether you're part of a younger company that was born with the technical and cultural tenants of DevOps, or part of a more legacy enterprise that's undergoing digital transformation, we invest in these DevOps principles and processes and products to quickly respond to our customers' needs, deliver high quality software, and ultimately remain competitive as a business. So why hasn't application security followed the rest of the product and engineering organization in shifting left? As I was doing research for Stackhawk, I wanted to understand why security hadn't really made it into the developer workflow. I interviewed very quickly more than 50 CISOs, security professionals, CTOs, VPs of engineering, and found that there were a lot of technical barriers to current solutions, as well as some pretty meaningful cultural barriers that we need to address in order for this change to happen. The most glaring thing that stood out to me when it came to culture was the relationship between security and engineering team being pretty deeply strained. It wasn't too dissimilar from the early days of this more traditional IT ops versus devs uh, during digital transformation, sort of DevOps taking hold. Um, but it might be a little worse, honestly. Like these teams have very different KPIs and operational objectives. So whereas your DevOps and development organization is about orienting the team to focus on business objectives, security teams are aligned to reducing risk. Oftentimes at what might come across as at the expense of the business objective. And this has fostered some pretty meaningful cultural issues. We see a lot of a, a lack of trust and empathy between these two groups. So when speaking with security folks about engineering being more involved in AppSec, I would commonly hear things like, you can't get software engineers to care about security, to which I call BS because engineering really cares about the quality of their code and producing great code. 
So we're going to talk about why I think that that impression has happened. And then from engineering, I hear things like the security is team is the department of no, they're really hard to work with. And, you know, once in a while, once in a quarter, they surprise me with a bunch of work that I need to rework or fix, and I've moved on to other tasks. The next piece is about transparency and observability. So all of these things are really core tenants of DevOps, and it's something that's missing in the security discipline today. Developers aren't invited into security software very often. And there's little trust that developers should be able to see or action on issues until the security team tells them to, which is super inefficient because they're responsible for solving the problems anyway. And then empowerment. My co-founder, Scott Gerlach, was formerly the CISO of SendGrid, and he talks about how often in the security discipline, we want developers to care about security but we don't trust them to take a first pass at assessment or resolution of issues. He comments on this tendency for security teams to buy AppSec software, and then they lock it down so tight with approval gates everywhere, it's impossible for an engineer to use. Now let's get into the technical challenges that come with modernizing application security. First of all, most tools on the market, and we're talking about largely about DAST here also, that's where um, Stackhawk lives and operates also in API security. Um, a lot of tools on the market really are built to run against prod by a security team. And there's a lot of challenges with the production bias that we're going to double click on throughout the remainder of this presentation. Next, these tools are super difficult to configure and deploy. So many, and particularly in land of DAST, where we operate, which is scanning your running application, they're difficult to get working in a repeatable manner. And it makes automation really difficult. They just, most tools weren't built for it. And most AppSec tools were built with the idea that a human is going to be manually running tests against an application. And the good news is this is changing, but that's created a, a, a lot of challenge in, in shifting this, this technology left. Third, these tools tend to generate a lot of noise. The output is really verbose and it's written in very like security person language rather than something that's easy for a software engineer to quickly grok and action on. And we all know that a key component of DevOps is mitigating noise and ensuring that a developer's attention is only drawn to what's truly important. And fourth, it just doesn't fit in with developer tooling and processes and workflows today. So on the previous slide, we talk about security folks saying that devs don't care about security. But with this list of challenges, my question is, how can they afford to? So in a world where software engineers are largely measured by delivering business value, this cost of caring is too high, and it's our job to remove these barriers. So we discussed that many AppSec tools on the market are run, built to run against code that's already been deployed to production, and they're designed to be operated by a security professional. This orientation toward production and a lack of involvement by the development team at the right time in the right context makes it impossible to modernize AppSec. So when we look at the production bias, we think of it as having a few components. And the first one is people. AppSec tools are commonly run in production today by the security team because that's where they know the application the best or by a pen tester because that's their point of access to the application. When we think about this context, it makes a lot of sense that tools to date have been designed for this group. However, it's highly inefficient. Both of these groups struggle to instrument their tests because they're less familiar with how the application actually works. So setting up an engagement is often a heavy lift to get a good assessment. From there, the primary values these groups they focus on is the finding of things. It was so difficult to set up this engagement, I better find a lot of stuff, right? So there's a lot of emphasis placed on the number of findings versus finding and fixing the right things. And this is inefficient also because the finders are not the fixers. So now we're just in this game of ticket shuffling or 
you know, making sure that somebody is recording something and passing it off to another team member. And it reinforces this adversarial relationship that we talked about because the role of the security team becomes, hey, look, I broke your stuff, now go fix it. So I'm not advocating on this slide that people should not get pen tests. I absolutely think that they should. I'm just suggesting that this should not be their introduction or only access to this type of information. The next most critical part of the production bias is timing. As companies are rapidly shipping code to production, security is not baked into the workflow. So either you're not really rapidly shipping because AppSec processes act as a blocker, or the security team is constantly playing catch up, and very often it's the latter. And it gets worse. When AppSec tools favor running in production, the bugs are already in production. So there are going to be times that we intentionally ship security bugs to production, just like we would a QA defect or bug. But the intentionality is the important thing here. This should be done eyes wide open and be a risk-based decision. You might know that exposure is super limited and this issue might be fixed in the next sprint. But production should not be the first place that you are checking if there are any security bugs. Next, let's talk about context. So a check for security bugs in production, you know, some period of time after a release, is highly inefficient. Your engineers have moved on to other sprint tasks and are no longer in context of the code. So fixing involves a lot of context switching, which is both painful and expensive. So when we scan for security bugs in production, typically tools are scanning an FQDN like www. or app. And this is the next piece of context which is the result of that type of scan is a list of bugs that exist somewhere in the application, which makes it really difficult to identify the app or the service that's been affected. And it lacks the context of the specific data that's handled by that service. So this is also where you get a lot of that ticket shuffling because if a security person is finding this bug somewhere in the app, they need to figure out what team is responsible for that part of the app, who was last working on it, and then create a ticket and ask somebody to work on fixing this issue, which is just too much inefficiency in this process. And then we talked about an inherent focus on the number of bugs found, and then the percentage being fixed over time as like a primary driver of value. This ignores the business context of the finding and trade-off decisions around business value generation. Instead, we should be engaging in discussions like, how important is this application to the business? Should we be fixing all of the bugs on an internal application or really just going fast on that? And how should we think about our apps and the data that they handle? So the production bias results in the wrong team, meaning the team who isn't ultimately going to fix the bug, finding vulnerabilities at the wrong time because they're in production and without appropriate context. And now I wanna talk about how security-based development should work. It's a lot like any other type of testing. And when we look at the developer workflow, I'm just going to read this slide, but when a team writes code, they know that the syntax is wrong when it won't compile. When they merge code, they know there's a problem if it doesn't merge. When they run unit tests, they know the code is wrong if it fails a unit test. When they run integration tests, they know that something is wrong if it doesn't work as designed. When a team introduces a vulnerability, we need to get to the place that they know because it fails a security test, just like the rest of their testing suite. And at this point, I want to emphasize that instrument, instrumenting test-driven security is something that engineering teams should feel comfortable instrumenting, even if they don't have a security team or a function at their company. This is something that engineering can and should lead within their organizations. So what does the right team look like when it comes to AppSec? We believe it's it developers and informed stakeholders. 
Developers fix security issues. So let's make them aware of them as they're writing code. And in this world, we are reimagining the role of security as a coach whose responsibility is to enable the team to be successful. There is a lot of value in optimizing for the developer experience. It's super efficient because engineers can fix bugs while in flight of writing code. It democratizes security information across the organization. And when doing that, security becomes a standard discussion in building software. It affords collaboration among teams at the right level and provides an opportunity for more targeted education. Um, my co-founder Scott talks a lot about how much money we spend on these very broad brush security programs when, when we have a sense instead of what engineers or what teams are introducing different kinds of vulnerabilities the security team can work with that team to make sure that they understand the data that their app is handling and why these types of bugs are really important to squash before deploying to production. And most importantly, I think this allows the security team to be able to scale. Next is about the right timing. And that's obviously <laughs> in pre-production. So instrumenting security tests into CICD gives engineers feedback immediately. Many of our customers check for AppSec bugs on every single month. And this is ideal because if a security test fails, you know you introduced a security bug on your latest change. So when we add the ability to test locally, now engineers can quickly iterate on the fixed test loop if a new bug is identified. So for AppSec to modernize, engineers need to be able to test while they're writing code and test while they're building code. And security tools need to play well in both phases of development. And last, we're gonna talk about context. So the right context for finding security bugs in your code is as you're writing it. When this happens, engineers can fix egregious security bugs in flight. So that's gonna result in far less bugs making it into production, or I call them vulnerabilities once they're in production. Before that, it's just a bug, right? And that's less rework later. Next is being in context of the application. And that comes with real-time security testing. So teams can leverage their microservices architecture to instrument security tests on smaller bit bits of code, which make it easier to isolate and fix security issues. Teams should also be able to make better judgment calls when they know the job of the app that they're testing and the data it handles. And the best context they're going to be in of those two items is when they're in that app working on it. And then the third piece of context is empowering engineers to fix the most important things, not all of the things where they are in context of their code. The security team should be collaborating with engineering on assessing business risk and work across product and engineering to triage lesser severity issues based on resources, business objectives and risk. So when the right people are doing the right jobs, there is a bridge built between security and development. The goal of the security team becomes enabling the business to go faster, safer. They lay the right foundations and they focus on scaling security within the organization by empowering developers and they serve to help educate them around risk. When this happens, the development organization can build more secure software faster. When we automate the job of finding AppSec bugs and we empower our engineers to fix issues in flight, security becomes a very natural part of the development process. So you might be thinking, that sounds awesome. I'm not entirely sure where to start. So I've included two really great types of AppSec tools that every company should be using. SCA or software composition analysis helps teams find vulnerabilities in open source libraries or containers. These tools compare versions of libraries to third party components, or sorry, or third party components that you know have vulnerabilities and alert users when it's time to update. Next is DAST, which is dynamic application security testing which scans both your running application and your backing APIs and oftentimes GraphQL for vulnerabilities. 
This is an active scanner in that it's actively attacking your app with inputs and seeking outputs that indicate present vulnerability. The nice thing about DAST is since it reports successful attacks, there are less false positives. You can think of it a little bit like negative unit testing. If it passes the test, you have a problem. So to get started, if you're a software engineer, you get to skip step one because you know your application. And you should simply choose an app or a service to start scanning for AppSec bugs. And then choose a technology and just start scanning in pipeline. As you get comfortable, you can layer in additional applications and technologies. And I've included um, a few examples here of both DAST and SCA tools and capabilities that could be a great fit for your organization. So that's it for me. Feel free to email me at joni at stackhawk.com or visit stackhawk.com to learn more about how we are putting AppSec in the hands of software developers. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I'm Joni. Um, I am here to answer any questions you might have. So if you do have questions, please go ahead and um, put them in the chat channel. Let me see if there's anything in this Q&A. So the chat channel would be a good place to start, and I would be happy to answer those questions for you. Don't be shy. We can get started with one question and I can jump in a little bit more about the last slide, which is more action oriented, right? How you can actually get started with different scanning capabilities. So for this group, we wanna make sure that the scanning capabilities work really well um, either working in our Git workflow or in the CI CD process. And those last two examples were really good. There's a third called SAST that you could definitely look into. And when you're trying to understand the differences of the different tooling, um, as we mentioned, uh, DAST or dynamic application security scanning is scanning the running application. So a lot of times the ways that people will deploy this in CI CD is they will you know, use Docker to de deploy the, the scanning technology. Uh, they'll have a fixture database with sample data that they can spin up ephemerally and attack, uh, use to attack that app that's running in pre-production with sample data. You don't really want to use an active DAST scanner against production. We talked a lot about that, obviously. It is possible to run against production, but it can be a little bit destructive in terms of changing data or manipulating data as part of its test for, uh, for a security scan. So you definitely wanna instrument that pre-prod. And there's a ton of great information out there on how to scan, like we talked about APIs, GraphQL endpoints, um, and your web app for those bugs before you deploy. Uh, again, that's actively testing the code that you wrote, right, or code that you've brought into your code base earlier in pipeline. When we're looking at SCA, for example, that's looking at open source or libraries, the way that that technology works is it's very much in your code. So it's looking at lines of code and it's trying to identify if you've used any packages or versions of frameworks that show that that particularly, particular enumerated version, of that application is now out of date or is known uh, in a national database or a, not national worldwide <laughs> database of having vulnerabilities. And that tool will alert you that you should upgrade um, those frameworks or open source capabilities to the most current version that doesn't have any known vulnerabilities. That is also great tech and people should definitely use it. It can be a little noisier than DAST because it doesn't actually have the context of knowing 
if that vulnerability is exploitable in your application. That is the bonus of DAST because, because the test passed, it, it, it does indicate that that issue is exploitable. So you're going to get less false positives. But those are great technologies that you should definitely consider looking into in your organization if you don't currently have access to them or if that isn't part of your typical workflow today. Let's take a look here. Yeah, okay, this is a great question. Um, Jonathan says that oftentimes if you discover a vulnerability in a library and some tools, like we really think that Sneak is awesome. They're a great partner with us. Dependabot also has this capability where sometimes you can automate the fix. So it will programmatically update that library to the new version. And for many very good reasons, <laughs> You may not be in a position to upgrade that version. Maybe it's a good reason, maybe it's not a good reason. But as we build software, a lot of times we can end up customizing frameworks to build a feature or capability that we desire that that framework doesn't quite handle. And the repercussion of that is when you go to, if you need to upgrade because of a security vulnerability, you may have to unwind what you did um, in order to patch, um, and you'd have to rewrite likely that code in a way that still allows the app to perform in the way that you want to. I am not an expert in um, that part of security testing, but there, I wish I knew, I will now in future have examples, but there are a lot of methods of developing applications that can make that um, easier to transition to in terms of updating the underlying code of that framework or open source um, piece of code without having to undo all of the things that you custom wrote on top of the application. That's definitely like a best in class type of behavior that I actually don't hear of <laughs> that, that often. We, they should pick a talk on that. That would be really good. Any other questions? Yeah, absolutely, Jonathan. Thank you for asking the question. I really appreciate it. Well, if you're interested in learning more, um, this is not intended to be a specific product pitch, but our company is Stackhawk. We are a dynamic application and API scanning provider. We are built for devs. So free trial, um, free product offering, tons of awesome documentation, and integrations with all the top CI CD providers out there. So if this is something that you are curious about, I encourage you to take a look. You can self-serve a ton of information on our website without having to speak to a human. It is designed that way. And should you be interested in learning more, or it seems like it might be a good fit for your company, check out the free version or definitely reach out to us. My team is awesome. They are technical humans that can answer your technical questions. So don't be shy to ask any questions that you might have about this different tech and definitely feel comfortable giving it a try. Um, I hope you guys are having, and humans are having a wonderful conference. And definitely feel free to reach out to me or anyone on my team if you have more questions about automated application security testing. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.